Yes, everybody, welcome back to Talking Wolves. Welcome back to a brand new match preview on the channel. We will be previewing Wolves' trip to Turf Moor to take on Burnley this weekend. Of course, it's been over a couple of weeks now since our last game. Um, so I don't know whether that's a positive or negative. I'm sure we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that. But before we kick off, be sure to go and check out our channel partners over at Betmate. During the Newcastle United game, I came so, so close to getting in the paid spots. But um, if you haven't already got, uh, get, uh, been involved in our Betmate competitions, get involved this week. It's £3 to enter and you'll enter a prize pot of at least £150 for this week. All you've got to do is select seven players who you think will perform well on Sunday. And now this is my team. I've gone very Wolves heavy with this. Now, I did this team a couple of days ago, so it will change with some of the team news that I'll be talking about later on in the video. Um, as you can see, I've gone with Saar, Johnny, Tarkovsky, uh, uh, Matinho, Pedenz, Jimenez and Huang. Uh, but of course, that all may well change. Um, as always, guys, link in the top of the description down below. It is a code to join. So if you've already got the app, go on Private Pots and enter T-L-K-B-U-R-N. And you'll get involved in that. Of course, you've got to be 18 plus, UK residents only. And of course, gamble aware. But Wolves, back in action. Now, when you've had such a long break, especially after a defeat, you don't know whether it's going to be good. And the players are going to be fresh and fit again. Or whether we're going to be a little bit rusty. And we've been made to sort of dwell on that defeat. Uh, Bruno Large said in his press conference today that I think he still knows Europe is still on. Um, and if Wolves can grind out some positive results between now and the end of the season... I think there's no reason why we can't push for Europe. Of course, West Ham United, probably our closest rival, have got all their eggs in the uh, Europa League basket right now. They're still in that competition. Um, so Wolves will be keen on trying to, you know, take advantage of West Ham, dropping points. And, you know, we've got games such as Burnley, such as Norwich still, such as Brighton. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, we've got the tough games against Chelsea, Liverpool, City. So, really, we need at least nine points from those first three games that I mentioned if Wolves want to be getting European football. Now, in regards to team news, a little bit disappointed. Of course, we know Ruben Neves is injured, but it sounds positive now in regards to when he's going to return. Bruno Large has hinted that we may well see him next Saturday, uh, if not going into the Chelsea game in a couple of weeks' time. So... Uh, probably bang on sort of schedule. Uh, they did say about early May, didn't they? So, um, fingers crossed, you know, it's gone a lot so quicker than planned. Fingers crossed we're going to see him in a wool shirt sooner rather than later. Uh, Pedence, unfortunately, is still injured. I'm not too sure what's going on there. I think it was a foot injury uh, that was reported uh, during the Newcastle game, and that, unfortunately, is still the case now. And Max Kilman as well is going to be out and unavailable for this game. Uh, he was injured. I... I think it was actually during the open training session this week at Molyneux. They put on a training session in front of the fans. Obviously, uh, the school kids are on a half term in the UK right now. So we're able to see the players uh, training at the stadium. And I think uh, Max Kilman had a heavy fall and had to be helped off the pitch. Um, and obviously, Bruno Large has confirmed that he's not available. So that means, of course, a couple of players... Um, and, and, and the sort of team selection up in the air, really. Of course, without Neves, we had uh, no Dendonka last time out against uh, Newcastle United, uh, and Kundal came in. So will Bruno stick with that and maybe add Dendonka to the midfield three? We'll have a look at that in a second. But in, in regards to Burnley, uh, they're on some decent form, aren't they, right now? They, they got a draw um, against West Ham last week. They got a win last night against Southampton. And this has all been since the departure of Sean Dyche. And it was a, quite a bit, a bit of a shock uh, when he was sacked as Burnley manager. But four wins all season. Uh, could have easily won that game against West Ham. They won the up and missed a penalty. Ended up drawing the game 1-1. And yesterday they seemed pretty comfortable um, against Southampton. And one of the main areas, obviously, that they've got that threat is the set pieces. Um, you know, they've got some big defenders. They've got some big attacking players as well. So they are... A danger from set piece, and that that's what Wolves have got to be quite cautious of going into this game. Of course, we'll talk a little bit about, a, a bit more about Burnley in a second, uh, but these are well. This is my predicted lineup ahead of this game, and like I said, there's a lot of different possibilities which I'll touch on and talk about. But I, I think Bruno will probably go with something like this, which we'll see Jose Sarr start in goal. I think it'll be a back five. 
I'll probably Marcel again, although I would like to see Ryan Aitnori back involved. Um, Sace, Cody and Bolly at the back. And uh, Johnny, I think, at right wing back. Uh, although Semedo, again, is fit, so I'm not too sure what will happen there. Will Bruno try and fit both Johnny and Semedo into the team, putting Johnny onto the left-hand side? Who knows? I think we'll stick with a midfield too, Martinho and Dendonka, but may well easily see a midfield three. And I'd like a front three of Pedro Neto, Raul Jimenez obviously returning to the team. And I'll probably go with Francisco Trincao. But there's a lot of possibilities there. Fabio Silva, of course, has done okay over the last uh, couple of games. We could see him start with Jimenez. I'm not too sure if we've seen that start a game before. Uh, maybe Jimenez and Silva, possibly someone like Pedence dropping in behind them as like a number 10 and sort of almost a free roll. I'd be intrigued to see something like that as well. And so there's lots of different possibilities for Bruno to test and try out. And obviously, if not, it'd be Kundal, Dendonka and Matinho in a midfield free as well. But I caught up with the guys from Turf Cast Podcast, obviously Burnley fans, uh, to get the latest. Now, this was recorded before their game against Southampton, so please do bear that in mind. But they gave us their thoughts on the dice sacking and what their hopes are for the remainder of the season. So then, guys, delighted to be alongside Joe from Turf Cast. Joe, how are you keeping, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, all good, thank you. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, Burnley away for Wolves this weekend. Obviously been a lot of drama uh, down at Turf Moor, or up at Turf Moor, should I say, uh, over the last couple of weeks, really. Sean Dyche, talk to me. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, what, what, are the, what is the consensus around the Burnley fan base at the minute? You know what? The Burnley fan base is kind of split, and I'm very, I don't know if it's just people saving face, though, because yeah. I know that some fan bases do that and some fans do that. My initial reaction was I was gutted, I was shocked, I was disappointed with the way it ended. And I still am. I, my main thought process is the timing just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't yeah. make sense to so do it eight games before the end of the season. If they'd have done it in January, it'd have made more sense. I still wouldn't have agreed with it. But you'd be able to understand what they were trying to do. Get the new manager bounce, like your Leeds and, and, and Newcastle's. All right, Newcastle have had a new money bounce. Um, but you know what I mean? <laughs> so I like, get that new manager bounce and, and push on. But to do it eight games for the end of the season, when we've got some big games, just doesn't make sense. All right, it might turn out to be a masterstroke if we do survive. But the fact that we don't have anybody lined up as well is another thing that doesn't make sense. We now have, with all due respect to him, a failed Tranmere Rovers manager's, uh, manager currently, you know, caretaker with Ben Mee alongside him like someone who has zero experience I think he has a UA for B license or whatever um but it's it just doesn't make sense and the program notes for because we'll be recording this on Thursday before the Southampton yep. game the, the, the program notes for tonight's game against Southampton Alan Pace the chairman has come out and said it was a footballing decision like four wins all season isn't good enough basically is what he said which is fair enough but to do it now I don't know if it's just that Norwich game with the final straw. I don't know if he went into that Norwich game thinking, right, win this, and then we'll push on, and then they just didn't show up. Because I will look. you look at some of the games this season, your Brentford game, where we just didn't show up away, Newcastle away, didn't show up, Leeds away, didn't show up, Watford at home, didn't show up, Norwich at home, didn't show up, and then Norwich away, just didn't show up. I think there's been too many cases of the players just not playing for him, whether they don't believe his mentality anymore, or it's just the same voice in the same ears too many times, saying the same things, they've just got fed up with it. But, yeah... Kind of just doesn't make a lot of sense at the minute. Um, but, you know, hopefully by Monday or even by Sunday, you know, there'll be someone new maybe in the stands, for example. Um, mm. But we'll have to see. There's a lot of confusion around the grounds at the minute. But some fans, like I said, are saying correct decision, four wins all season is enough. And let's be fair, it isn't. And I don't think anybody else would have lasted as long as Dash did. But I think Dash had a lot of credit in the bank for what he'd done at the club over the last 10 years. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the timing is, is strange. And the way the statement came out when it, you know, the sack, Dyer sacked the assistant, uh, sacked, you know, a, a few different people. I thought, well, they've definitely got that, somebody lined up and ready to, ready to go. And I think, you know, to to, to sack him, and like you say, with the, like the timing as it is, you've got to have someone lined up. Like you said, yeah. we, you've mentioned a couple of clubs there that have had the, the new manager bounce, let's say. If Burnley had someone lined up and got them in straight away and you got this new manager bounce, you know, you could be you could be knocking on the door, you know, to, to survival within the next week or so. Uh, whereas now, you know, like you said, you've got two guys that haven't really got a, a huge amount of experience at the top flight level. Um, it's it's going to be in, interesting. And like you said, we're talking ahead of your your game on Thursday night. Um, as you know, as it stands, you've only lost one more game in Wolves uh, this season in the Premier League, but you've drawn a hell of a lot of games. You're dropping points yeah. uh, here and there. You've mentioned a couple of those games there. 
what have been sort of a very quick summary of the Burnley season? I know you've mentioned some of those games there, but which are the teams that you have picked up points against and which are the other teams that, you know, you should have done better against? So that Norwich at home, nil-nil, not good enough. You know, if you can't beat Norwich, I, that was quite early in the season and we're all thinking, right, hold on, this could be a long, hard season, this. And no disrespect to Norwich, but, you know, Norwich are the meme team in the Premier League. They go up, they yeah. come down. You know, you should beat them at home. So that were a bit of an eye-opener. And there's Newcastle away. Before they had the influx of money, they hadn't won a game all season at that point. That was their first win. Um, Eddie Al was there, but I don't think they made any signings of anything at that point because Chris Wood was playing for us. Mm. Um, Watford at home, nil-nil. Um, there's just been too many of them. And if even even the worst thing was the start of the season, the first game of the season, it won the up against Brighton. We absolutely demolished them in the first half. We hit the bar, we hit the post. Their keeper made a couple of great saves and we scored. Should have been out of sight. Um, Potter brings on Lallana, goes five in midfield. And we, our midfield is poor. It really is poor. Um, and they just got overrun in midfield and then they won the game 2-1. It kind of set the tone for the rest of the season. Uh, Everton, a few games later, went one up at Goodison, overran in midfield and Rafa made some changes, lost the game. Uh, Leeds at home, drew 1-1, one, one, you know, went one up again, made changes in the middle, overrun. Drew the game in this case, so a bit of improvement. But you know, it's it's just it's just been one of them. There's there's been too many games against your likes of your, like I said, your Watfords and your Norwiches that you've got to be beating, and you're just not. And there's yeah. been games where we've got as noses in front, even like West Ham. Like we we got our noses in front and got a penalty, and then missed the penalty. You know, it's just these little mistakes that are just just not good enough. But it's honestly, you take we've drawn 13 games, you take three of them out and put them in the win column, which could have easily been. And then we're not in, you know, we're looking at being above Villa. So it's been a strange season, but it's been a long, hard season. And ultimately, we've not been good enough. And can I sit there and say there are three worst teams than us in the Premier League this season? No, I can't. And that's why we stayed up last season. We didn't stay up because of how good we were. We stayed up because it was three worst teams. Uh, whereas this season, we are one of the three worst teams, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, like I say, it's, it's all about fine margins. I say that about Wolves as well. You know, we're in a great position um, there have been games where you know we've dropped points, but at the same time, there have been games that we've won that we probably probably didn't deserve to win. Um, so I think for Burnley, it's all sort of the ne the negatives, really. You know, you've been unfortunate in yeah. a number of games, and like you say, it's crazy. Just if two or three of those games went the, went another way, you wouldn't be really, you know, you wouldn't you'd be in a great position. Um, yeah. Obviously, looking at the managerial situation, there's lots of rumours going around at the moment. Um, in your opinion, who's who's the man that you want want Bernie to bring in? I think because we are going down, and I'm can't I'm, I say I'm resigned to it. I, I was watching the Everton game last night with a heart rate at 160 mile an hour. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm resigned to it, but still keeping an eye on it, sort of thing. I, we've got 10, 12. First team players out of contract in the summer as well. Ben Mee, wow. James Tarkovsky. So, you know, there's going to be a there's going to be a rebuild on. So I think this is a chance to completely change the mentality and the ethos and the structure of the club. I would mm -hmm. like, and I don't know if this is a bit ambitious because I know a few Arsenal fans uh, have been saying that they wanted him and stuff. But is it is it Knutson, you pronounce it? Uh, the Norwegian manager? Yeah, He's at yeah, yeah. Bord Bordeaux slash Glint. He plays attacking football, 4-3-3. I'm surely he'd want a chance to manage in the Premier League. All right, we might not be in the Premier League, but we could give him the chance to get us back into the Premier League and build a name for himself. I would like him. I wouldn't be too disappointed with Wilder. I don't know if that's just a lazy link because he's, you know, a British middle-aged man sort of manager like Dice, but <laughs> they, they do play a different style, though. Like People will yeah. think that he's as a similar style to Dice, but it's not. Obviously, there's the over overlapping centre-backs and things like that. Um, so I wouldn't be too disappointed with any of them two. I said... As soon as Dice was sacked, I said Nuno, but I think that is probably a little bit ambitious. He will have his sights set quite higher than that. I think he'll probably be disappointed with what happened at Tottenham mm. uh, and think that he could get a job at a similar size club, whether even if it's abroad. So I don't. I think that's probably a little bit too far. But um, any other names that have been branded about um, Billich? I, I don't think I'd want Billich uh, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. Um, he, he tends to get to the Premier League and then just sort of like doesn't really know what to do. And he has like a bit of an 18 month lifespan as well. Mm. Daniel Fark's another one. He might get us up, but then what's the point if he's going to send us straight back down again next season? So for me, I'd completely change everything about the football club and get in a new manager, a different culture, and a different style of football. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting. I think Walder, the, the comments Walder's been making in his interviews is always quite mm. interesting because he's yeah. rather than saying, no, I'm not interested, he's sort of, 
not not entertained it, but at the same time, not sort of dismissed the Burnley talk. Um, yeah. So I think that would be a, a safe choice, like you say. I think the, the the thing with going abroad, and I think long term it would work, but you can't. We had uh, obviously many years ago when we sacked McCarthy, um, Terry Connor came in. It was a disaster for him. We brought in Stoll Sol back, and he was a Norwegian guy as well. And his intentions were pretty clear with what he wanted to do. He wanted to play a completely different style of football, but almost wasn't given the time and didn't quite yeah. have the players to do it. So I think if Burnley fans wanted that, or if that's the route Burnley wanted to go down, they may have to be patient and they may not have to, you know, I don't mean they can expect to bounce back first season because it's going to take some doing. But saying that, if he's, you know, if he's got a pretty much a, a clean slate, not many players yeah. in the club and can bring in those, his own players and a pot of money, then... You know, he should be able to build that squad. And it's a similar sort of thing, to, I suppose, to Palace this year. You know, this summer, they had a very small squad, brought Vieira yeah. in. And, you know, he's actually done OK, hasn't he? So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd really be intrigued to see see Bernie bring in. But the season's not completely over. I think with Nuno as well, if you stay up, it's a, maybe an outside shout. But I think right now, I think it'd be difficult to, to bring in. Um, but, yeah, uh, what, what are your thoughts? And going into the final sort of, you obviously, before, uh, before today's game, uh, you're playing on Thursday night. You've got seven games left this season. What sort of calibre of opponent have you got left to play? And is survival still on, Joe? Like I said, I am resigned to it, but I do think survival is on. If you look at our fixtures and compare them to Everton's, I haven't got them to hand at the minute, but we've got yeah. to play yourselves um, at home. Not at, at home, winnable. I'd always say mm -hmm. that about anybody. Do I think we'll win? That's a different question. Um <laughs> Southampton tonight, winnable. What for the our next three games are Southampton tonight, you so two home games against non top top six opposition, one mm -hmm. team that has nothing to play for, and then what for the way. They are all winnable games. Whereas Liverpool now, uh, sorry, not Liverpool, apologies, Everton fans. Um <laughs> Everton have got Liverpool and then Chelsea. So I think they've got to play Arsenal as well off the top of my head. So our calibre of opponent, I will just quickly try and get the fixtures um up. But our calibre of remember. opponent is a yeah. lot better is a lot better than Everton. So we do have that. There you go. It's Southampton tonight, then you, then Watford. Then Villa at home. They've been poor recently. Tottenham away, you can write that one off. Uh, Villa away, and then Newcastle at home. So there, there's, there's what? Out of one, two, three, four, five, seven games, there's six winnable games there. Do I think we'll win six after winning four all season? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, but that, but that's, a different, that's sort of like a different debate. But they are winnable games. And you look at Everton's, I'll just quickly get them up on my screen here. So they've got Liverpool next. Then they've got Chelsea. Then they've got Leicester away. Then they've got Watford away. Then they've got Brentford at home. So they're winnable. Then they've got Palace at home. Then they've got Arsenal away. So they are better fixtures than Everton's, but there's still in there for me too many winnable games. Um, mm. But the next two, if we win our next two games or get seven points out of the next three, the pressure will be right on Everton because we'll be above them by three points, I think, because they've got to play Liverpool and then Chelsea. They may get a result against Chelsea. They're a bit hit and miss. They were terrible against Arsenal yesterday, especially defensively. Um, but they're going to get spanked against Liverpool. So if we beat Southampton tonight and then pick up a point against you or even beat you, then we will be mm. above Everton by the time they play Liverpool. That would be huge. Do you think Leeds could massive, get dragged yeah. back into it? Obviously, you've got a game in hand on Leeds. Do you think if you win tonight, that, that could drag Leeds back, in, back into it? Yeah, I, I, I think Leeds will be okay, but just looking at their fixtures, which I did yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, I immediately thought, hold on a second, Leeds could get dragged into this. So they've got Palace away, I think they'll lose that. Then they've got City at home, I think they'll lose that. Then they've got <laughs> Arsenal away, I think they'll lose that. Then they've got Chelsea at home, I think they'll lose that. Then the next two games after that are Brighton and Brentford. So when it comes to the last two games of the season, Leeds wow. could be right in the mix. Do they have a better squad than us? Yes. Are they in a better position than us? Yes. Are they probably more likely to stay up than us? Yes. But they can definitely get dragged into it. But the thing is, we need to start winning games. If anybody's going to get dragged into it, we need to start winning games. But like you say, we've won four all season. We're going to have to win probably 75% of the games we've won all season and pick up another couple of points as well to be able to do it. That turnaround is massive. That's the worrying thing. We're looking at these games. Yes, they are winnable. But the turnaround in form is going to have to be huge from what we've been seeing all season. Yeah, I think tonight will be an interesting one. Obviously, the video will be out after after that game. Um, but I, I don't know. You're making me start to sort of lean towards and, and try and root for Burnley tonight now. I, I'm, I'm the Burnley wanting... of old. The yeah. Burnley of old. I'd look at it and be like, we can do this. Yeah. But this season, something's got to change. If Dice mm -hmm. leaving could have been that thing that kick-starts 
the change. Yeah. But when you've got, like I said, a failed Tramie Rover manager at the helm, then I'm not so sure we can do it. But against West Ham, he got a good result. We played better football. We didn't just lump it long up to Veg Horse, which has been my main criticism of Dice. He's been far too stubborn. He's been hoofing it long to Veg Horse, as though he's Chris Wood. It's not Chris Wood. Chris Wood couldn't head the ball. Veg Horse can't. Veg Horse wants it to his feet. Mm. Mike Jackson tried to play the ball uh, into his feet. He didn't just hoof it long. He didn't just hit percentage balls into the channels like Dice does. So, it, it could be the thing that kickstarts it, but it would be a lot better if we had somebody already in, to be honest. Obviously, you mentioned Veghorst there. You've got, obviously, Max Cornet. You've got a couple of decent players. Who are the players that Wolves really got to be uh, keeping their eye on on Sunday? Uh, I, th- I think you've mentioned the main two there. They are probably the better players in the squad. If I'm being honest, Cornet has been poor recently. He, all right, he scored against Everton, but he then missed a sitter against Norwich and then missed the penalty against yeah. West Ham. So he has cost us a little bit in the last two games, if I'm being honest. But he's still, he goes missing in games a bit, but he still has the quality. He has the quality that some of the players don't have. Uh, with Veghorst, we need to learn how to play to him. Like I said, Dice has been hoofing it to him. We need to get it into his feet. Let him come deep as well. He likes to come deep and pick the ball up in the middle. And that brings other players into the game. Um, so them two are your main ones. Dwight McNeil's another one. You know, he's a good player, but he's been quiet this season. And then after that, we don't really have too much in terms of attacking flair or even any attacking quality, really. There's Jay Rodriguez, who does a decent job as a number 10. Uh, and then and then you're, you know, you're scraping the barrel, really, when I start talking about Ashley Barnes. Um, you know, he's, he's been a great servant, don't get me wrong, but, you know, he's mm. the wrong side of 33, I think now, 34. Um, so, yeah, our better players are are the defensive players, uh, apart from the, the two that you mentioned. So, Paul P was fantastic against West Ham. Tarky was fantastic against West Ham as well. So, your main worry should be breaking us down, I think. Do you think players like um, Vic Horst and Corday would stay if you go down or are they one, two of the first to go out the door? I think they probably will be two of the first to go out the door, especially Corney. I feel like he he feels like he can sort of like be at a, a mid-table, so to, so sort of like a top-half club. Whether whether or not he can, that's a different debate, but I think he yeah. feels like that. Um, for example, like, say like when he scored the winning goal against Everton, he's one of them that he will do a lap of honour after the game on his own with his shirt off, just clapping the fans. Like he, he loves it, so I think he mm. will he will want to stay in the Premier League. Veg Horse, with him only being here six months, who knows? He might stay, but I've heard rumours, and again, they're just rumours uh, that there's sort of like a gentleman's agreement that if we go down, he gets to leave. Um, I don't know how true that is, uh, but you would think that somebody would snap them two up anyway, even if they didn't want to leave. Yeah, yeah. and if the truth about the club's finances are correct in the way that the club was bought we'll find that out in a few weeks then the club may want to sell them to anyway to be able to bring in some fresh up-and-coming blood yeah it's gonna certainly be interesting but joe toughest question of the uh, video your school prediction ahead of sunday's game uh, i think I, I, we've, like i said we've just done our video uh, on my channel and I'll, I'll say the same there i think it depends how we get on tonight against southampton if we get a win against southampton and a comfortable win that, that would be the first comfortable win all season but if we get a, like, a comfortable two nil three nil dominant win then we can go into this game with loads of confidence and if you're not playing for a while you can come you like you said you start games slowly anyway so if you haven't played for you know nigh on three weeks then yeah. I think you'll start slowly. And then if we can get in your faces early on, then I do think we can win. Um, but it depends on tonight. So I'm going to play it safe and sit on the fence because I would take a point against you boys because you're a very good side, knocking on the door of the European places. So if I can look at our next three games and say, beat uh, Southampton, draw against you, and then beat Norwich, uh, not Norwich, sorry, Watford, I will be buzzing with that. So I- I'm going to predict a draw. Right then, Joe, uh, appreciate you jumping on. Uh, where can people find you if they wish? Yeah, so if you want to check out some Burnley content, who knows, it could be your championship club next season. Just head to Turfcast <laughs> Podcast. We're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. You can find us everywhere. Thank you very much, mate. And all the best for the rest of the season, like I said. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed we'll see you next season. Cheers, mate. Hopefully. So big thanks to the guys over at Turfcast. Uh, you can check them out. I'll leave a link to their channel in the description down below. And in regards to a, a score prediction from me, I'll probably go with a 2-1 Wolves win. Um, if we want to keep European hopes alive, we've got to win this game. I think if we don't, it's probably over, to be honest. But you never know. With uh, a winnable game for Wolves, if we can win this week, beat Brighton next week, Who knows, we'll be in a very, very healthy position. Guys, as always, be sure to hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll do all our post-match content uh, with the match reaction and the fans react after the game as well. And until next time, I'll see you all very, very soon.